Today is January the 24th, 2019, and what I have for you today is a uh, uh, an honest replica of a uh, UTC W20 Williamson amplifier. Runs uh, four 6L6s in the final. I've got 5881s. They're all brand new. I like these uh, 5881s, the, the tongue saw. They, they perform very well. It's driven by a pair of 7N7s, which is the uh, Loctal style of a 6SN7. Has a little bit different pinout, and uh, the pinout is for a reason because there's symmetry between the uh, output pins and the input pins, the, the plate outputs and the uh, grid inputs. I'll show you that here in a minute. And here is the power supply for it. It is a huge power supply. This is a very large for a 20 watt amplifier. It's got a big umbilical cord right here that goes between the two. And this is where it plugs in here. I wanted to show you the top first. Uh, <clears throat> the meter is installed. Actually the original one had uh, design had two phone jacks here where you were to insert a meter and you adjust for a maximum of 200 milliamps with this one and then you use this one to uh, adjust 100 milliamps per set. This is a set of tubes and this is a set of tubes. These two are parallel and these two are parallel. So it's push-pull from here to here. So that's that. Let me show you the schematic of it right quick before I flip it over. Here's the Williamson. Right here, this is exactly what it's built to. Let me um, let, let me get rid of that glare. This is a, a really really good schematic of it. You can find a lot of schematics of this of these W10s and W20s, but a lot of them are hard to read. This one is uh, very good, and if you scroll up, the the, the W10 is right up there above it. There's the W10. Really classic schematics. But you'll notice down here in the power supply, it's got uh, two chokes, pi input to a second pi. This one, output of this one is what feeds the uh, output tubes. This one feeds the voltage amplifiers. See, this one feeds right here. The output of this one right here. So they go to the trouble actually to put a, a second choke. For the uh, for the voltage amplifier section, it's built exactly like this, component for component. I did take the time to match all these resistors. These are, um, I believe, 100 ohm. No, these are 47 ohm. These are 100 ohms. Uh, 1Ks. So I went through and hand selected all those. I believe these are 100Ks down here, 22K, I don't remember. Whatever whatever the list says down there. That's the way it's built. Let me show you over here again. Let's see. Well, let's flip it over right now and look underneath it. Well, here's underneath the power amplifier. This is that big uh, UTC LS60A transformer. It's rated at 30 watts. It's very large. These are the two decoupling capacitors right here. Very large. Here's the uh, umbilical cord where it comes in. Here are those 147 ohm resistors I'm talking about how they wired the 6L6s together. And um, the switch right here is so that you can switch between uh, one pair and measure the current and the uh, other pair and measure the current. This is a shunt because this meter uh, scaled at 300 milliamps but it's actually a one milliamp movement, so I had to uh, build a shunt around it. I've shown how to do this in, uh, in other videos if you're interested. And one of these pots adjusts for a maximum current and the other one adjusts for a balance. And there's the symmetry between feeding it the 47K to 22Ks. And if you notice right here, what's kind of nice about these seven and seven, see the symmetry right here, there's a plate and there's a plate. So it comes straight out of these two this is this is the plate and the plate feeding the decoupling capacitor right straight into the grids see there's symmetry there the, the grids are ne right next to each other and here's the plates on this one the plates right there but oh, no no I'm sorry that's the that's the filament excuse me yeah the plates are here and here 
Well, I'm getting them mixed up. But anyway, <laughs> if you look it up, you'll see it. Uh, I try to lace up my cables and stuff like that. These are not going to be used. Come straight in, just exactly like the schematic shows. There's no uh, gain control on it, so that's the way I built it. All the components are a little bit oversized, you might say. Let's take a look at the, uh, the power supply here. Here's that oversized power supply, the huge power transformer for a 20 watt amplifier. Here's the uh, main choke that goes through before it feeds the uh, plates, the output tubes. Here's that secondary choke. Uses a couple of 5U4s parallel. Uh, this is uh, where the umbilical cord goes, and this is actually not wired. This would be for auxiliary power for maybe something like a uh, preamp or something. These are actually not used anymore. This is an original power supply, so we just leave some of these original components in to, to fill the holes and because it looks nice. Now let's flip it over. The wonderful part about a lot of this old equipment is the simplicity of it. There's the power transformer and wired. The green wires are 6 volts. The high voltage wires are all red. The white wires there for the AC. Just goes through a switch and a, and a fuse. Grounded. There's the three filter capacitors. These are 25 microfarads at 800 volts. This one over here is a non-polarized. I believe that one's 10 at 600 volts put that sign in there right there, 600 volts, because that's what it is without a load. I just use a very small bleeder resistor right there, 390K. It takes it a couple of minutes to completely bleed down, but you definitely want to put some kind of bleeder resistor in there. The thing could hold, a, these big capacitors could hold the charge for quite a long time. Uh, I figure about one watt of dissipation is enough under full load. And of course it drops well below 600 volts. It drops down to about 480 under full load. But that is underneath it. So let's run some tests on it. Okay, got her all set up here and warmed up. I'll show you what this meter does. I'm not going to be adjusting them, but I'll just show you what it does. Uh, you use this meter right here to set it to 100 milliamps. That's 100 milliamp for this side and then you flip it over here and you use this one in case say this side is 80 and say this side is 110 whatever 90 and 110 you adjust this one so that they're equal even if they're less than 100 or more than 100 you set it to, till they're equal on both sides and then you use this one right here to set it to 100 now actually that's 100 milliamps through two tubes so that's 50 milliamps per tube uh, if we, if our switch position allowed it, we would, and, and but it doesn't the way it's wired and it's impossible to, I'd have to do some major changes to make it read all of the cathode currents. We'd read 200 milliamps for all four tubes. There you go. Okay. I think we're going to use the, uh, this wonderful old, uh, HP 8903 to do all the tests this time. A lot of times I've flip between that and the, the Tektronics. But let's uh, start out with a kilohertz. We can say uh, frequency, one kilohertz, uh, amplitude 1.5 volts. And uh, there's its THD right there, 0.16. It agrees with the Tektronics, 0.16. The kilohertz at 18.92 watts. There's our kilohertz again, and uh, here's what it looks like on the oscilloscope. Looks very good. Very little. Uh, that's our error output. It's extremely small. Wow, I'm I'm really really quite impressed with this thing. Okay, I know that's not a full 20 watts. It'll do the full 20 watts. I think we have to go to uh, amplitude of one 1.55 volts. So our THD went up ever so slightly, 0.25. There's our 20 watts, and that's at 1 kilohertz. Uh, we can say uh, frequency 20 kilohertz. There's our 20 kilohertz. There's our power, and that's our THD. 
they don't exactly agree. They never have, and there's all been all kinds of discussions about the two. See, this is the uh, HP uh, THD. This is the Tektronix THD. This is a uh, voltage. If you square that divided by eight, you'll get this number. But that's at 20 kilohertz. Very good. 20 watts. Now let's go to uh, let's see frequency. 20 hertz. There's our 20. There's our 20 watts. And there's what it looks like. And there's our THD. 0 0.34, 0 0.35. Pretty darn good, huh? For an amplifier design, probably in the early 40s, maybe even the late 30s. Well, that is a massive transformer. Actually, maximum power at about 1% THD is, is uh, 25 watts. You can actually see the 20 hertz making that thing, making the needle vibrate. So there it is. There's the mighty UTCW20 Williamson uh, style amplifier built to original specs with the 7N7s, the 46L6s, the big UTS, UTC transformer, primary choke, secondary choke. Parallel 5U4s. An amazing performing amplifier. Oh, oh, there is one other thing I gotta show you. Signal to noise. Signal to noise on this thing is pretty amazing. See, we can clear this. We set frequency 1 kilohertz, amplitude 1.55 volts. Signal to noise. That's how you do that. In case you have one of these things. And uh, there it is right there. It um, it turns it on and measures the output and then it turns it off and measures how quiet it is. And there's its signal to noise ratio. 89 to 90 dB. That is phenomenal. You don't see that very often. I attribute it to those massive chokes over in the power supply and possibly a separate uh, power supply so that there's no a uh, big power transformer sitting here and in, inducing uh, current into uh, the, the output transformer. That's what it is. That is some of the cleanest 20 watts I can measure. And at that level, okay. Well, we ought to do one more test. We probably ought to run a scan of it so so that you can so that you can see a THD scan. Uh, I'm just scoping back on that just for a second. And then we're going to go back to the uh, PC and run a scan on it. Okay, what we're going to do now is scan it uh, from 20 to 20 kilohertz. We're still going to be using the uh, HP 8903 and a nice program written by a good gentleman named uh, Pete Millet. And uh, we control that with the uh, PC nowadays. And what I've got it set up with is five points per decade, 1.55 volts input. This is what I showed you a while ago. And then we say start. And then what it does, it puts out a one kilohertz tone. There's our voltage across eight ohms, 12.67 volts. If you square that and divide it by eight, you'll get, uh, again, this number right there. There's its 20 watts at a kilohertz. This is just our reference level. And there's our THD. There's our voltage again. And then, after we do that, we say, uh, okay. And watch what it does. I know a number of you that have watched my videos have seen me run these kind of scans a number of times. Okay, it starts out uh, very slow. There's 20, 20 hertz right there. At just a hair over 0.3% THD. I know there's a lot of glare. I've tried a polarizing filter on this at some of you guys' suggestions and it kind of helps, but look at the THD. Now that's what I call flat. It's at 0.3%. We're out at uh, 3 kilohertz. It actually runs pretty quick. But that's a... That is seriously flat. At a 20 kilohertz, it measures 0.6%. Uh, I'm sure if we went up there and verified it frequency by frequency, we'd see the same thing. See, here's 1% right there. That's a half percent. So it's 0.3% all the way out, 
and just crosses the half percent mark at uh, at 20 kilohertz 20k right there okay well there you go I have to document these things I absolutely love to do this and I'm very fortunate to be in possession not the ownership of but possession of all of this uh, magnificent hardware I realize that this is about an 80 pound uh, 20 watt amplifier and I will be installing it into my system and listening to it so thanks for listening I hope this helps and I hope you enjoy these uh, these videos of this old uh, of these old parts and things that are just almost unobtainable nowadays.